Hello and welcome back to my channel. We're doing this video a little different today because today I'm going to tell you about how I got started in fandom, shipping, and eventually something that had never been done in Draymine or Raylo history before, fanfic bookbinding. It was 2002, I was 14 years old and obsessed with Harry Potter, as were most kids my age back then. Um, Chamber of Secrets was in theaters and I was trawling MuggleNet.com every night to get my daily dose of HP news. And then one day I discovered the fanfiction section in MuggleNet and so I poked around as you would. The works were tame, probably G-rated since MuggleNet was a kid-friendly site and they weren't very good. Now, this wasn't my first foray into fanfiction or even non-explicit fanfiction. You know, I started reading uh, fix way back around 2000 when we got our first family computer at home. It was an ancient thing that ran on Windows 98 and had to be hooked up to the internet via dial-up and prepaid cards. And, you know, sometimes I even miss the sound of that modem trying to connect. And sometimes I shudder at the memory of having to disconnect because someone in the house had to make a phone call with a landline. Some of you don't even know the struggle of having to wait three hours to download one song through LimeWire, hoping you don't torrent a virus or a crappy live concert recording, you know, but I digress. In 2000, I was already reading fanfiction from my favorite anime shows, um, Roroni Kenshin, Fushigi Yugi, Slam Dunk, Flame of Rekka, uh, from either fanfiction.net, Yahoo groups, or self-hosted fan sites. You know, the GeoCities and Lycos and Zanga and gosh, I'm so old. But fast forward to fanfic on MuggleNet two years later. I ran into one where I don't remember the title or author, but the Hogwarts students were given journals, which they would then use a la Riddle's diary to chat with another student anonymously. And this story centered around the chats between Hermione Granger and Draco Malfoy. But like I said, MuggleNet fix were kind of lame and lacking, so I turned to Yahoo search, because this was before Google was the search engine, and I found LiveJournal, and this is when my first 18-year on-again, off-again love affair with Dreamini began. LiveJournal is no longer the same LJ it used to be back in the early aughts. It's now this weird site that's been taken over by Russian bots or something, but the communities I frequently uh, visited are still up. They're, they've been abandoned, I think, or someone checks it now and then, but it, they're still there. Dreamini and DMHG Fic Exchange um, for those two communities. I used up so many prepaid internet cards just going through those communities and reading fics and looking at fan art and, and interacting with fellow readers and writers. You know, eventually it clicked in my head to copy and paste from LJ and FFN to Word in case my card ran out and internet got cut off, so at least I could read the fix offline. I never printed them though, um, mainly because we didn't have a printer at home and it didn't seem like um, a sustainable way to read fanfiction in secret as a young teenager. It was in LJ where I saw the rise of the OG authors like Floor Coaster, Music, Akasha the Kitty, and the departure of greats like Every Thursday or Sage, Gravity, and BK11. Almost hand in hand with LJ was our use of Colored Grey or Contra Veritas, a fanfiction archive for the more adult works, which sadly went down due to hosting issues and never got back up. We lost so many great works during that crash. I was there for the creation of Hawthorne and Vine, I participated in the DMHG Fic Exchange, and was a part of the team behind the Dream Mining Awards. I was everywhere, and this went on for about a decade, even surviving Twilight, where I briefly obsessed over Jacob and Bella, or Pirates of the Caribbean, where I was into Jack Sparrow and Elizabeth Swan. There was even a time when I shipped Hermione and Fred Weasley because I had a huge crush on James Phelps. Not Oliver, James. They're, they're twins, but there's, I can see a difference. Anyway, um, but despite all of the other ships, I always went back 
to my OTP, Germany. But life has its plans and I got super busy with school. I moved to the US, attended the local college, and also began to date and party. I got my AA in graphic design, worked during the day from 8 to 5, and partied hard until 2 a.m. Repeat process. There was barely any time to read fan fiction, and this coincided with the slow downfall of LJ, the community breaking off to join this new thing called Facebook and the emerging website called Archive of Our Own. And then life mellowed out, and when I logged back into LJ in the mid-2010s, it was no longer the busy, sprawling community it once was. Fix were still on FFN, so I read those, but the interest was kind of waning. And then I got pregnant at the end of 2018, and this was when I started to get back into reading Dream Miney fanfiction again. By now, LJ was long dead, and in its severed head sprouted Facebook groups, where anonymity wasn't as big of a deal. I read Manacle throughout my high-risk pregnancy and gave birth shortly before the fic ended so I could really empathize with her minus plight in that story, although mine was less, much, much less traumatic. I got into Love's Bitka 8's Rights and Wrong series and was so into the series and her works in general that I pounced on Julie's interview with the Wine, Wands, and Waffling podcast on December 3rd, 2019. The episode came out much earlier uh, maybe like a week or two weeks or so but i didn't i didn't get a chance to listen to it until december 3rd but i remember that day because i tweeted about it um and in it julie mentioned ever so Raylo's fic willing which was obviously a Raylo fic i had heard of Raylo before but it didn't appeal to me back then despite me being a crazy star wars fan that endorsement from one of my favorite Dreamini authors, heck yeah, I read that fic immediately. And so my love for Raylo began so hard. It was love at first sight, a whirlwind romance. But I seemed to have jumped ship at the wrong time because this was right before that horrendous movie that shall not be named came out and Raylo's hearts all over the world broke, including mine. Not that it stopped me, I then created a Raylo stan account on Twitter so I wouldn't bombard my main account with fanfiction stuff. I continued to ship Raylo until March 2020 when the sudden, unprompted idea got into my head to physically bookbind diasterism sort of the Jedi series in Landscape the Blur of Conquerors. It wasn't just this idea of like print, three hole punch throw into a three ring binder. No, this was, I want to make these works look like a commercially, professionally bound book. This was something that had never been done before in Dreamini or Raylo, and I was determined to do it first after nearly two decades of being a quiet consumer of fan fiction and fan art. You know, I wanted to contribute something. And what better way to do that than to gift a bound book to its author? I was, and still am, notoriously bad at leaving written reviews because I'm not very good with words that don't include emojis or keyboard smashes. So the first thing I ever looked up was paper used for paperback novels. I wanted authenticity. Regular white copy paper wasn't good enough. Unfortunately, uncoated to the cream paper used in paperbacks is very expensive to procure. So I said, fine, I'll practice on white copy paper. So, you know, I watched uh, videos by C. Lemon, Das Bookbinding, Sage Reynolds. I went to the subreddit. I read up everything I could. And since I already knew how to typeset thanks to my background in graphic design, at least that wasn't a problem. You know, I bought the supplies. It took me two weeks to complete my first book, which was Sword of the Jedi. It rests between the mattress and nightstand on my boyfriend's side now because I've been nagging him to finish reading it. He still hasn't, but one day he will. Since March 2020, I've made 100 books. I've refined my techniques, moved on from white paper to cream paper, applied spine titles using vinyl, yet another thing that's never been done before, in, at least in the bookbinding circles that I've um, joined. I started rounding and backing. I've learned how to trim the edges and now playing and incorporating embroidery on book cloth so I can decorate the spines and covers. Sometime in the future, I'll be doing leather bound books too. 
it's expensive, but I already know I'm gonna end up doing it anyway. I've expanded from Twitter to include Instagram, coffee or commission intake happens, Patreon, TikTok, YouTube, and Tumblr, and recently I got a domain which is fanficbookbinding.com. It right now it redirects to my card, uh, which it, where you can find all the details for commissioning a fan binding. But eventually, I'll develop that site into something that's a little bit more cohesive, more details and samples of my work. But in the meantime, you can also search the hashtag, um, hashtag fanfic book binding, which is um, something that I've been using for all the works that I post. When I started using that hashtag, no one else had been using it before. So I kind of took it as mine not that i can stop anyone else from using it too but just letting you know if you want to see my works that's probably where you can find it in most platforms so it's been quite a journey these past seven months i've sent so many books to so many authors and readers and that's the joy i get from making books for free and yes i know commissions require money but those are spent for materials and shipping my time and the craft is essentially for free, so I make no profit. And I hope to keep doing what I'm doing, and hopefully you'll still be here for the ride. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.